so I used to work in a design studio in Liverpool City Centre, um, and we did a bit of like sports related work, but it was all graphic design bases, a lot of printed stuff. Um, and so I didn't really ever do illustration. That was just more of a, a hobby I do in my spare time. But I did the, the first thing I ever sold online. Actually, the very first thing I ever sold online was an Aquaman poster from that TV show Entourage. Yeah. They, um, and they, they used to have these fictional movies yeah. that the main actor was in. And so I, I just created, I basically copied the poster from the TV show and got a few printed just for fun. And I had loads of people messaging me asking to buy one because they weren't real. So they, it was like this fictional film within this fictional TV show. Yeah. So I used to sell stupid stuff like that. But I'd get like literally 10 made and sell, sell 10. And then I wasn't really making any decent money off it. So that was just more for fun. But yeah, the first kind of proper thing I sold was when I worked in that design studio, I started spending my lunch breaks just trying to illustrate footballers just for fun. And that was 2013, it was. So at that point, Twitter was quite new, I think. And you could you could post something on Twitter and, and it felt like it got seen by loads of people straight away. So yeah, thousands. I think the start of the 2013 season, Liverpool beat Stoke 1-0 on the first day of the season. Daniel Sturridge scored. And I drew, yeah. I look back now and cringe because it's this really simple little like doodle of Daniel Sturridge. But somebody just replied to the tweet saying, I could have buy this. And I thought, well, I suppose so, yeah. So... I got it printed as a little A6 postcard. And I think I had to get a minimum order of 25 or 50. So I ended up with a box of them. So I just started tweeting people saying, do you want to buy one of these? Three pound each. And, and it kind of went from there. Yeah. So once I'd done that first one, like it was all a bit of a of an accident, but somebody else then replied saying, you've got to do one of these now every week because it's no point just having one. You should do them weekly. So it just snowballed from there. So that season I started selling them every week, doing one pair game. Um, and then about a third of the way into the season, realised that I was selling enough to make it worthwhile. So started doing a pre-order then for an end of season box set because, yeah, it was hassle to be honest, selling them individually for like three quid. And by the time I got them printed and postage was 80p or something, I'd be going to the post office some days with one of them. So I'd be making 25p profit maybe or 30p on, on one card. And it wasn't really worth the time to, to just put all that admin time into it for one sale. So yeah, I started selling them as a box set with pre-orders and that worked really well. So people just paid up front and then at the end of the season, they got the, the full set delivered and yeah, it went from there. So once I started doing it, I kind of got the bug to, to sell stuff online and for a while I just did postcards because, well, for loads of reasons, they're quite easy to store because they're quite small, quite easy to, to post as well. You don't need to roll them or use postal tubes, anything like that. Um, and they're just a bit different. I think people found different uses for them. Some people bought them and framed them. Some people bought them and just gave them to a mate because they went to the match with their friends. So they were cheap enough to be disposable that you could, like I had, we beat Man United when Gerard kissed the camera and people were buying them to send to the Man United mates just for fun. Because <laughs> it was for three quid, like why not send them some fun? Yeah. I love it. Um, Absolutely love yeah. it. Oh yeah, but that was just a happy accident really. It wasn't like I had this grand plan that I was going to sell postcards and develop yeah. a business centred around that. It just, just kind of happened and then getting feedback from people it was quite interesting to see that some people just kept them in a the box and wanted to keep them safe forever other people would do stuff like that give them to friends or, or frame them or whatever but it was it it quickly became apparent they were quite a flexible kind of product to sell so I wouldn't say that was anything to do with any kind of marketing genius it was just just went well really so yeah it went on from there and and then sold stuff online from 2013 up until last year really so yeah so just on, on the postcard series as well, just um, I, I quickly, like while you were chatting, I, I just wanted to have a look at the 13, 14 um, seasons again. Uh, Cause I remember that it's funny. Cause like, obviously when we did Carl's um, the three of like, it seems like the three of us all kind of started doing any sort of design work then in that season. Um, yeah. I remember the three of us um, posting and I did, I, but I presumed um, I probably presumed at the time, both of you, but I certainly thought that, you, Dave, had been doing it uh, before that, but I uh, just I want to talk about the the match day postcard <laughs> series as like a concept because I I feel like I remember for both for the thirteen fourteen one um, and then the other two that you did that you were posting them really quickly, really tight turnarounds after the matches. Um, so like, what was the the pressure like of you know essentially a ten month project that you've given yourself um, and trying to get them out that quickly? Yeah, I think that first season especially. It was. It starts off as a bit of fun, and then because it was quite popular, 
it did feel like the pressure was on to do them straight away. And there was definitely a link between the speed in which you got them out and how many you would sell. Because if you're playing on a Saturday and you're selling a postcard on a Monday, that's fine. But if you're selling a postcard based on that match by Wednesday, you might have another game the following Saturday and by which point everybody's attention is turned to the next game. So yeah, it was yeah. like this small window where it felt like you've got to get it out there and, and not necessarily get it printed and dispatched to people's houses, but just get the design out there for people to see. So that was always the aim to kind of get the design done within probably 48 hours of the game. Um, and I used to set aside a day, so often a Monday morning, to just kind of nail it from start to finish. So looking back, it was quite a good creative exercise, really, to set yourself a challenge. You've got no control over the score, so I was doing them whether we win, win, law, win draw, or lose, um, yeah. and trying to come up with something different as well, something creative every week. And that first season, it was very much like I was quite new to illustration, and I wanted to do a different style of illustration almost for every single piece. So some of them are quite like um, player heavy illustrations. There's one in like a teletext style of illustration. There's one that looks a bit like sensible soccer, like an eight bit football game. And there's a couple where I tried to do something a bit more realistic or a bit more abstract or, but it was just me basically messing about and trying stuff and seeing what worked and what didn't, but all was based on the theme of the game. So there's a lot of times people have come like feedback and say, oh, it must be horrible when you've lost and, you've got to do a postcard and, and it was obviously you never want to lose a game but I always felt like they were the most interesting ones like I've often received the best compliments on those ones because the challenge was was greater really yeah. you're trying to turn yeah. this yeah. this defeat into something interesting and not shy away from the yeah. fact that you've lost because that's just the, that's the story of the game but my intention was always for people to flick back in future years and, and instantly remember the match so whatever the design was it hopefully evokes those memories of that game and or, or a moment in that game or something special that happened during that game that would kind of get you to remember. Oh, do you, yeah, do you remember when yeah. Suarez did that mad thing against Norwich or Daniel Sturridge scored with his backside, whatever it was. So they were all, yeah, that was the, that was the aim really to do that. And then as the years went on, it got more complicated because halfway through that first season, Liverpool got in touch actually and wanted to turn them into an official licensed product, which on the one hand was great. It gave it credibility and it, it kind of reached a different audience because back then they were willing to to share it on their socials and stuff like yeah. that as well. So initially that was good, but there was downsides to it as well. It meant that they got final sign off on every design as part of that agreement. So that that initial aim to turn stuff around in like 24, 48 hours was just not possible because I, I might have done it in 24 hours, but then chasing approval on it via emails and chasing up people who were extremely busy with much bigger projects than my little three pound postcards was quite a massive challenge and so in a way that kind of changed the dynamics of the whole thing so it wasn't always possible to get them out there straight away and then there were some challenges on um things that just because i'd signed a license deal i couldn't do so i come with a, an idea and show the club and then they'd reject it because of either legal issues or potential concerns about upsetting other teams or managers or players or whatever it was so there was just a whole extra layer of complications that came with that but it's just one of those things it was it was good in loads of senses but it definitely changed the project from me doing a bit of a personal project for fun yeah and experimenting with styles and just trying st stuff that was different and I think it, the the original set I was very much speaking like a fan like we'd I don't know we we'd get beat by Chelsea and you'd be absolutely fuming about Jose Mourinho just being horrible and and, and Jose yeah, all that kind of stuff. But you could you could condense that into a postcard and try and get those feelings across. Whereas once it became an official thing, maybe there were certain things that the club just wouldn't want to endorse yeah, you yeah. doing. So yeah. It, it's yeah, it's what I don't know. Looking back, maybe maybe it wasn't the right decision. But at the time, I'd just gone freelance as well. So I'd left my job in the design studio and it was forming quite a decent part of my income. So I was taking on any work that I could get because I was brand new to freelancing. And I was doing stuff like wedding invites and pub menus and anything really that people would offer me, I'd do. So this was a bit of a sideline, like a bit of a, a second income. And because we nearly won the league until Gerald slipped over, it was that season. Because we were doing so well, it just the popularity, popularity of them really kind of snowballed. And so financially, it was a good, a good decision to do and to keep going. But um, creatively, maybe... I guess it's just like client work. There's loads of constraints with client work compared to doing your own stuff. And it's a constant, yeah. like, um, 
I wouldn't say an issue, but it's a constant kind of bugbear of mine that I see stuff on social media that people have designed for fun for their favourite club. And all the replies will be like, oh, why doesn't the official club do stuff like this? And you think there's so much more to it than, yeah. than just, yeah. there's been than a just lot doing going, what you want. There's been a lot going yeah. around recently about, um, I don't know how much this is in any of your sphere of interest, but um, the, all the Spider-Man no, uh, no Way Home posters where yeah. like, uh, and then there's obviously loads of amazing designers who do stuff for fun. Um, which is great. I do loads of work just as personal projects. And then somebody's always like, yeah, oh, why can't Marvel do this? And it's like, well, because when you've got the constraints and the concerns of a multi-billion dollar enterprise um, versus just a designer going, oh, f- I think this would be really cool. It's just a really different process. Um, yeah. And I think what, what I was going to say is like, um, you've, you've said to me in the past, um, like when we've worked together, that I kind of take feedback and um, and issues or, you know, changes in direction really well and I I always think the fact that I've kind of before I became an illustrator as like a proper vocation I'd been doing a lot of film work working with brands and clients for years so I've gotten very used to the collaborative process of clients kind of needing to have input and it being really valid so I bet in a lot of ways like the fact that you so early on in your uh, career as a freelance designer and illustrator kind of got that close with such a major brand um, then it's probably geared you up really well to just develop that and to understand and appreciate what it's like. I think a lot of people who probably spend years being really great, um, just kind of self-starters and doing their own work, then dropped into that environment would be like, whoa, whoa, why are you trying to change so much stuff? Yeah, definitely. And I think you have to just see them as creative constraints that are no different from if you're working with a brand who would never use yellow, for yeah. example, then that's just one of those things. That's that's the brief that you take. And in my opinion, it's, it's similar to that. The certain things you can and can't do, but you've just got to be creative to work around those things or to, or to switch direction or to do something else. And, and you can moan about it, I suppose, and you can get frustrated. But that is just part of client work. It's part of the job. And that Spider-Man thing, for example, there'll be multiple layers of people that would need to sign off that official poster. And there'll be yeah. a legal team and a marketing team and a design team. And then the, probably the film producers themselves and every, and there'll be all kinds of issues about this actor's got to be double the size of this yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. This person's name's got to be bigger than this. All that kind of stuff that the average person wouldn't even think about. So you can make your fan art version that looks incredible because you've got no constraints and there's no rules and, and there's no comeback if Tom Holland's not going to get upset because you made him tiny on your version of the Spider-Man poster because it's all good. But yeah, it's just, yeah. I think it's one of those things that you get used to with client work. And, and if you... If that's the type of thing you can't really work with, then maybe client work's not for you. There's other avenues you can go down, but yeah, for me, it's just part of the job. Yeah. Um, talking about clients, so I just wanted to go back to the the, the postcard series because obviously you said sort of like halfway through the season, Liverpool got in contact with you to sort of do a future series and stuff. Was that your first big client, or did you have big big clients prior to that sort of um, um, in your portfolio? Yeah, probably. Probably about that time, I'd just started working with BT Sports. So someone at BT had seen the postcards. And and I think that season as well, BT had just launched, or maybe the year before, but they were quite new in the in the kind of football broadcasting um, industry. And they asked me would I do something similar to a postcard to promote, I think it was Liverpool versus Newcastle live on BT Sports. So I did a very similar thing, illustrated Suarez and a couple of other things based on an idea of these roles, epic games with loads of goals. And, and then... They tweeted it on their social media. So then I did a couple of those that season for them that was separate from postcards, but in a very similar style. So, yeah, they were kind of around the same time. At the same time, I started working with BT. Then the Liverpool deal happened. So they were kind of my first two major clients. Yeah. I remember back to some of your work for BT, actually. And I remember, the, is it the, was it the Champions Draw? Oh, um, yeah. And I, I, I'll never forget one of the pieces that you did that I, I think to this day still stands out in my head um, is I remember, I think it was when Leicester had won the, the Premier League and you did this piece with the book opening, like the story continues as they went to the Champions League. Yeah. And and the one thing I always found about your, even your postcards and stuff is they're very, very clever. Like, although the artwork is obviously brilliant, but just, I, I used to always, you know, like I said, you've always been an inspiration for me and kind of what you've done is, you know, someone I've, I've always looked up to, but I just, it's just, 
the cleverness and the way the, the cogs are turning in your head for you to not just only produce a brilliant piece of work and okay. but to have something that's just so clever and and you know so relevant is it is it is it easy to always kind of come up with ideas how do you kind of seek that inspiration um you know does it take a long time oh i think it's it's different on every project isn't it but for me and i would think that part is the hardest coming up with the ideas is the trickiest bit almost getting it illustrated is, is the easier bit really but coming up with the ideas is definitely the the hardest part but going back to like my my very early career i'd graduated from um uni in product design because back then i didn't know what i wanted to do i just knew i wanted something design related and i couldn't get a job for ages i struggled to get a job anyway so i eventually got a job i got um they got a job doing some like voluntary stuff in design studios but every interview i went for they were saying your degrees in product design and yet you're applying for graphic design jobs and you've got no experience and you've got no background in it so i did a master's for a year at university, just purely in graphic design. And that was the first time anyone had ever asked me, like, what is the idea behind the piece? Because it's great coming up with stuff that looks nice, but there's got to be like a core idea to it that yeah. is what makes this piece work. So so I think I've always I've carried that through then ever since and everything I've done. So when I've, when I've worked now with illustrators and I'm briefing illustrators or designers on pieces, I always feel like that's, that's the first thing you need to do is nail the idea, make it, make the idea the best it can be and then the illustration will come after that or the graphic design so with the postcards yeah that was always a starting point like what is the idea of, of this piece what happened in the game what were the important moments are there any kind of clever visual cues or plays on words or anything like that that I can use that will make this idea kind of pop rather than it just be like anyone can draw a footballer in Anfield scoring a goal against an opposition team and, and it's fine it might look nice but I wanted it to be kind of a bit deeper than that almost and sounds a bit yeah. pretentious that doesn't it really but that was the tell plan a, that it was tell a story bit, really yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. what we were saying yesterday just that you know the creative block that you have even when you're doing thing, things individually it, it, I don't just want to draw Stephen Gerrard I want to draw something that has got a bit more meaning and relevance about Stephen Gerrard do you know what I mean yeah so definitely I can only imagine it's, it's even more pressure on that so the corporate environment to get it right as well. And I think it's got to like evoke something, hasn't it? When you look at a piece, it's got to either remind yeah. you of a moment or make you feel a certain way. And yeah. like, this is all getting a bit kind of arty. And I'm not a big fan of modern art a lot of it. I don't fully understand. But I get I get the fact that you might look at a piece of modern art and it makes you feel happy or sad or, or brings up memories of certain stuff. And this isn't quite as highbrow as that. But there's I do think like it's important that every piece that you do makes the viewer feel something or think something or evoke some kind of memory or feeling or remind them like it was lovely selling postcards and getting feedback off people who'd said I've, I've kept this one forever because this was like the last game we went to before my dad passed away so whenever I look at it I remember this moment and like they, that's nothing to do with me but it proves the point that some sometimes these things take on lives of their own and like yeah. Yoni's piece yeah. that's behind him of the the montage of Liverpool winning the league Every time I look at it, I think it reminds you of a different moment or a certain goal or, or where you were on a day. Like, we won the league. I was sitting in, in my backyard having a takeaway, not expecting us to win that night because Chelsea, Chelsea and City played. And, yeah. and they're the most random of memories, but but they're the type of things I think all pieces of art and design should should try and evoke, really, because then it goes deeper than just a nice visual piece. Because like you say, anyone can can do that, really. The, the key, yeah. I think, and the thing that makes your work stand out is if it goes deeper than that and and has that extra layer of kind of interest to it. Yeah, for, for sure. I always um, say, and I've said in conversations with these guys before, like I look at the that, the kind of work that you did, and I think specifically of the um, the 1920 postcard series, because I think like the evolution of your creative concepts from the 1314 one to, well, both the 1819 and the 1920s were, um, were amazing, but I, I, that's the kind of work that I'm often really envious of. I... I'm not the kind of designer who can often come up with that kind of um, very idiosyncratic notion that creates that kind of design. <clears throat> but what I think I am good at is complex compositions. So I then try and build a, a like that, the poster that's behind me and is on your wall off to the other side. Um, like, everybody's I, wall. And we talk about it every podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so it's I on try sale to, here. 
I tr- I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I'm there. Um, I try to build that that composition, and then uh, as I'm doing that, I build in the layers of ideas and um, the ways to kind of evoke things be- because that's just how my design process works. But I am really envious of um, like the kind of work that you've done on those, where it's like a single image that tells a story in such a creative way. For some reason, the one yeah. that all, always pops into into my head is um, the one I, I think it's from 1920. Uh, and it's, I'm going to find it so I don't get it wrong, but it's the, it's the one where the players are all like, um, the little toys in a claw machine. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, I just love that one because it's so, it's so abnormal. Um, but, and then you read the copy, which is, um, Alison was the pick of the bunch. And I'm just like, that's just wonderful that you kind of try to figure out how you can convey this idea um but then and then it's in such like a charming way Uh, but I don't think like I don't know any other artist that I know um working in the the sports sphere that would have gone that's what I'm going to (laughs) do yeah uh, yeah with a lot of those I think the coffee came first because there was something you try and pick out a moment like that game Alison was outstanding so you try and work out what kind of yeah I think the coffee would always come first and you try and think of of what you want to say and then once you've got the copy then the idea can be as abstract as you want because if the, if yeah. it aligns with the copy then it's going to work but yeah it was always quite fun as well because you, you won't get many clients paying you to draw Alison as a toy in a grabbing machine but yeah it's that's the best thing about personal projects and I think whenever like people ask me for advice on how do you get more clients or how do you get your work out there or how do you get noticed like personal projects for me is just that it, it almost sounds too easy but I've always found that that's that is the answer because you can you can do whatever you want there's no constraints there's no deadline which isn't always good because it might mean it takes you forever but you can literally be as creative as you like and show people the type of stuff that you want to be do in the future or show people your skills because maybe the client work that you're getting isn't showing your full range of skills maybe you're stuck doing the same old stuff every week but really you've got this passion for whatever it is 3d motion stuff or whatever so personal projects i find are just just the best way of getting your stuff out there and getting noticed and standing out from the crowd as well because you can do something totally different from what everyone else is doing. And every single client that, that I've ever had, I can draw back to that 2013-14 season of postcards because yeah. that got me work with BT Sports. Then it got me the, yeah. the license and deal with Liverpool. Then I met other people at Liverpool who wanted me to work on in their departments on other stuff. Then BT Sport introduced me to somebody else who gave me work and then people left BT Sports and took me with them to their new place but literally everything I've ever done all comes back to that 2013-14 series of postcards which like I said before was never like a great master plan was just a bit of a happy accident really 